Hello, my name is Mikhail Dvorkin, and today I will be using Kotlin to solve problem E, expected damage, from Codeforce Educational Round 95. This problem concerns some probabilities and modular arithmetics, so fasten your seatbelts. Let's get started. This is IntelliJ IDEA, and I'm using their Educational Tools plugin to start a Codeforce contest. I select the Educational round, and English and Kotlin languages are fine with me, so I start the project and switch to the problem E that I'm going to solve. But instead of making you read the entire problem statement, I'll rather tell it to you briefly myself, so let me switch to my own illustration, and here is what's going on. We have several monsters, each having some numeric strength. Each monster is denoted by a dot and the strengths are shown along the vertical axis. Also, we have several shields, each having two parameters, durability A, in our example it equals 2, and defense level B, shown by the dashed line. For a specific shield, all monsters can be classified to strong ones that have strength at least B, they are shown in red color, and weak ones that have strength less than B, shown in blue. When a specific shield is selected, all monsters are shuffled randomly, so that each permutation of monsters has equal probability, and we start fighting the monsters in this random order. When we encounter a strong monster, our durability A is decreased by 1, whereas when we encounter a weak monster, nothing happens. This is going on just like this until after some strong monster, our durability becomes equal to 0, after which point we are just basically losing all the battles, and all the monsters are bringing us the damage equal to their strength. So in this specific example, the damage brought to us will be equal to the sum of strengths of these three monsters. And the overall task is, for each shield given in the input, to calculate the expected damage that we will receive if we select this shield and fight the monsters in a random order. Let's solve this problem mathematically. Let's consider a specific strong monster, for example this one, and calculate the probability that it will indeed bring us some damage. Among all the strong monsters, it can fall into the first A ones, in which case we will encounter it before the durability becomes zero, and therefore it will not bring us any damage. Otherwise it will. So if we denote the number of strong monsters by S, the probability of each specific strong monster indeed bringing us damage is the probability of it not falling into the A monsters out of S strong monsters in the random order, which is S minus A divided by S. And the expected damage brought to us by this strong monster is this probability multiplied by its strength. Now let's consider any specific weak monster. Think of the S strong monsters and this weak one. If the weak one falls into the first A of them, the number of strong monsters encountered before the weak one will be less than A, and the weak one will not bring us any damage, otherwise it will. So the probability that the weak one will bring us the damage is the probability of it not falling into the first A monsters out of S plus 1 monsters, which is S plus 1 minus A over S plus 1. And the expected damage brought to us by this monster is this probability multiplied by its strength. Finally, the overall expected damage from all monsters is the sum of expected damages over all the monsters. Let's start coding in Kotlin. Let me scroll to the input specification and start reading the input data. The first line contains two integers, n and m, the number of monsters and the number of shields. So I read this line and split it by a space and map each token to an integer. Well, this looks like a useful function, so let me extract it and name it readInts 
in order to be used for the next lines. The next line with the strengths of the monsters can be read with the same procedure. And then we need to read the shields. Each shield is denoted by a pair of integers A and B. But instead of working with pairs of integers, I'd rather introduce a data class with two fields. And instead of naming them A and B, I'd rather prefer durability and defense. To read the shields, I create a list of M items, and for each item I read the integers from a line and transform these integers into a shield with such durability and defense. We iterate over all the shields, and for each shield we are to calculate the expected damage brought to us if we are using this shield. So let's initialize this variable with a zero and iterate over all the monsters. For each monster, we will calculate the probability of this monster bringing damage to us and update the expected damage by the expected damage from this specific monster, which is this probability times the strength of this monster. After calculating the overall expected damage, we can print it to the output and continue to the next shield. Let's recall the formula for the probability of this monster bringing us some damage. It depends on whether this monster is strong or not. So if this monster is strong, the formula is the number of strong monsters minus A the current shield durability, divided by the number of strong monsters. Let's calculate the number of strong monsters by taking all of them and counting those of them that are strong. Well, unfortunately, this number can become negative if the shield is very, very durable. So we have to switch it to the maximum of this number and zero. And the formula for the weak monster is quite similar. It is just the number of strong monsters plus one minus the durability divided by the number of strong monsters plus one. Now I'm ready to run the local tests and we encounter quite a problem because it's high time for me to tell you that the output in this problem is a little bit different. The authors of this problem asked us to calculate the answer in modular arithmetic, modulo a specific given integer number. So now we have to rewrite all our calculations to modular arithmetic. Let's start by introducing the constant with the given integer modulo. And now we are ready to write our own class for modular arithmetic. I wanted to extend the abstract class number that is present in the Java Virtual Machine. And unfortunately, in order to do that, we have to implement quite a number of built-in functions. I will be happy to discuss in the comments whether there is a way to do it without such amount of boilerplate code. Now, I want my class to be really interchangeable with int type, so let me correctly implement the toInt method by returning the value stored in our class. Now I'm ready to implement the binary operations for my class, and it looks like I need the plus and the division, for which I will need uh, the multiplication as well. So the binary plus operator takes another number and returns a modular number that is received by adding the two integer values and taking their sum modular m. As for multiplication, it cannot be done inside the int type, so I go to the long type, make the multiplication in the long type, take the result modulo m, it's still a long, so I have to go back to the int type, and finally take it all as a modular. 
for the division, I have to implement the modular inverse. But I know that in Java Virtual Machine, this code is already implemented inside the beginTager class. So let me take the numerator and multiply it by the inverse of denominator, in order to calculate which we take this denominator, make it a big integer, and call the already implemented mod inverse method with the argument m taken also as big integer. Now, this result mod inverse is a big integer, but it is between 0 and m minus 1, so it can, it can be safely taken as int. And now our numerator is multiplied by an int, which is a already implemented multiplication function, so the entire division is correct. Now I change all my calculations to modular by introducing a modular into each variable initialization. Also, to print the output correctly, I want to take each modular number as an int, and now I am ready to run the local tests. And we pass all the local tests. Very good. But if we try to submit it to the system, we will receive the time limit exceeded verdict, because the number of monsters and shields is quite large, and the amount of operations we do is the number of monsters times the number of shields. So let's do some asymptotic optimizations. Let's know that there are only two probabilities of damage making that are multiplied by the monster strengths. So let's extract these variables and call it the probability for strong monsters and probability for weak monsters. And these two variables will be multiplied by the sum of strengths of strong monsters and the sum of strengths of weak monsters, respectively. So let's introduce these two sums as new variables. Let's, for example, calculate the sum of the strengths of the strong monsters in a linear time by taking all the monsters and filtering only those of them that are strong and summing them up in the type long. As for the weak ones, let's rather calculate the sum of all monster strength initially by taking all the monster strengths and summing them up in long. And then the sum of weak ones is the total sum minus the sum of strong ones. Now we can reformulate the total expected damage as the probability of damage from a strong monster times the total strength of strong monsters plus the probability of damage from a weak monster times the total strength of weak monsters. But these sums can be quite large, so let's take them also modulo m. Now let's get rid of the linear calculations for each shield. And one of the possible tricks is to iterate over the shields in a smarter order, that is, in order of decreasing their defense levels. Let's make the variable monsters a sorted, mutable list, so that in the end it has the larger strengths. Now, as we start processing each new shield, we want to update the variables strong and some strong with the new strong monsters. So initially, these variables are both zeros. And when we come to a new shield, we want to search for the monsters that are in the end of the list and are strong with this new shield. If there are such monsters, we increase the number of strong monsters and we increase the sum of their strengths by this last element of the array. We also remove this element from the array and since this method returns the removed value, we can actually join these two lines together. Now let's run the code. And unfortunately, we see that the order of the answers is wrong, because we have changed the order in which we process the shields. 
So to fix that, let's introduce an integer array for answers that we will receive. And now when processing a shield, we want to know where to store the received answer. So with each shield, we want to store the index of this shield in the original input. Let's call it ID of the shield, and it's easy to introduce such field to a data class and introduce storing of this field into the reading procedure. So now the received answer can be stored into the answers array in the item represented by the ID of this shield. Now the answers are stored in the correct order and we can print the array of answers joined by a new line. Let's run this code and it works for the local tests, so we can now submit. And this code receives a runtime error on test 42. A very beautiful number, isn't it? The problem is that this calculation can have strong equal to zero, which leads us to trying to find the modular inverse of a zero, which is not possible. So let's think about the situation where we have zero strong monsters, in which case there is just no way for the durability to become zero. So there will be no damage and we can be fine with the answer zero that is already in the array. So we can just continue to the next shield if the strong is zero. Let's submit again. And this time our code gets accepted. Thank you for watching. Have a nice time using Kotlin and goodbye.